So peeps, another day and another real life breakdown video for you. So what we got here is the ops have reported that this part of the machine ain't eating up. So what I'm going to do is go through it with you, step by step, how we fixed it. So looking at the drawings, we're going to go to the first, we're going to go to what feeds it. Now we've got three phase solid state really here, relay here. Now I'm checking, I've got a balanced load of voltage across all three phases, but as you're going to see, you can't always, or well, you shouldn't rely on the voltage because you're going to have voltage there. But what you also got to do is check we've got the amps. We've got to have the juice. We've got to have what's pushing the heat through that heater. Because as you can see, I've got voltage across all three phases there. But if I put this onto amps on my clamp, we've got absolute diddly squat there. And that's across all three. So the volts are there, but we've got no juice going out to it. Now if I go to one next to it, that's pulsing. And as you can see, I've got about four. 0.2 amps across this that's across them three phases so our first guy here we've got the heater so on these you've got a thermal cutout now that's going to be your first pot call always and it'll be nine times out of ten a quick easy fix so what you want to do is you want to feel it impressed in and if you hear a click and it pushes all the way in you know that was just tripped could have an air pocket or something like that so i'll pop this one in which it was that explains why we got the voltage but no current being pulled after that we had some nuisance tripping coming from our thermal overload so looking at the drawings and it's 2q6 so i'm going to go up to the bank of them and i'm going to lock this off because we've got to take the covers off but we can't isolate the whole machine because that would leave the rest to go cold and our product to set but we've got play safe kids so i'm going to lock it off as always key in the pocket now, as you can see, here's our thermal overload, and you can see how it works now, the inner workings. So we've got our thermal overload, the mechanical part, and that separates your, your tails from your feed. And then you've got your bulb going into the heater itself and the chamber. So how that works is that bulb, the gases are going to heat up in it as the temperature goes up. Now it'll expand, pushing it back, now it'll trip that mechanical switch. Now these can be set at all different temperatures, ours are about 90 degrees, but in this case, we know our actual thermal cutout is good to go. So we've got to check our heater. So you could check your heater by doing it on a resistance check across all three phases, by working out what the resistance should be across them three phases and making sure it's balanced. So checking it out, you do your voltage squared divided by your heater power output, and that'd give you kind of your resistance across the phases that you needed. And you want to make sure that you've got a balance across the three. But that's done when it's cold. You think this is in the machine, you get close to it, and that's if that's all you've got, that'd be good enough. But oh, I'm gonna do an IR test. I've got to get it done quick. Production's breathing down my neck, and they want the machine back. So, and as you're gonna see, this heat is wired up in star with the actual terminal being fused together. So all I've got to do is do my IR test to L1 down to earth. Now, rule of thumb is you want about one mega ohm to a thousand volts. I'm doing 500, so I'm on 0.5 of a mega ohm, and it's just making that. And now this is showing us that we've got a breakdown in the insulation of the heater. We know that we've got to have a voltage leakage, and this is gonna give us an imbalance load across the three phases, and this is what's nuisance tripping the overload. So time to get the old out in with the new and wet bag when you're doing the top job is your best mate. Then we isn't just for them lovely nights when you're on your own. And as you can see, that's about as mangled as your son's favourite gym sock. It's seen about as much action as well by the looks of it. And in there, that is that is just absolutely mangled. So we're gonna get the old rod out. Because everyone does like a good damn good rodding. And if it weren't a food factory, I'd be putting a bit of spit on there, I think. But we're on production floor, so we've got to keep it clean. Now, I always like to keep everything neat and tidy. Don't be that bloke that just leaves it for the next one. So, a tiny little bit of heat shrink just makes it look neater. Now, when you're putting it back, you don't really have to worry about the phase rotation because on heaters, that don't really apply. Just get them in, get them secure, get the right fittings on. That's back on. We've got a thermal cutout. Make sure everything's clipped in. And as you can see, that's going up like an absolute rocket now. Heat's coming up nicely. So I'm going to check my, do a little bit of testing at the end to make sure I've got a balanced load again. And I've got what I need. Check we've got balanced voltage, no nuisance tripping. And we've got our control voltage coming in. 
don't forget you beautiful little people if you've been watching this you're not just approved you're alleged approved